Welcome to our Wednesday devotion. I'm Pastor Tim Gerbing, coming to you from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Have you ever found yourself in a frightening situation where you were in danger and you were helpless to find a way out? I experienced that as a missionary. I drove eight hours from my home in northern Zambia to the Zambian capital of Lusaka. At the outskirts of Lusaka, there was a large stadium where the Zambian national soccer team played. The Zambia Chipolo Polo, the Copper Bullets, played to a draw against Uganda's national team. The Chipolo Polo's failure to win that soccer match outright had bad implications for them for a chance to play in the African World Cup tournament. Now, little did I know as I drove into Lusaka late that afternoon that I was driving straight into a riot. Many of the Zambian fans were drunk and had become uncontrollably violent. Very quickly, I found my truck completely surrounded by this crowd. Some were throwing empty glass bottles at my truck. A couple of men jumped on the hood of my truck, truck shouting threats and pounding on my windshield. I couldn't drive any further. I was pretty sure that my ministry in Africa was quickly coming to a close. I prayed. And then, as if by a miracle, the crowd before my truck began to disperse with a very narrow pathway for me to slowly drive through until I was able to get out of the area to safety. I am convinced to this day that God had supplied an angel to disperse the people in front of my truck. Now, looking back to that day, a question lingered in my mind. Why didn't God simply work things out so that I wouldn't have entered a riot in the first place? He could have given me a flat tire on my trip to delay me. I had those often enough. Or he could have allowed the Chipolo Polo team to win so that there wouldn't have been a riot in the first place. But then I would not have experienced this special demonstration of God's loving care in my life. You know, it's one thing to say that you believe that God uses his almighty power to protect you. It's quite another thing to actually experience it and to really experience God's saving power. You have to experience something to be saved from. The Apostle Paul had been arrested in Jerusalem. He appealed his case to Caesar which meant that he had to be transported across the Mediterranean Sea by ship to Rome, Italy, where Caesar resided. In the midst of a furious squall on that trip, things looked hopeless. Shipwreck was imminent, and everyone, except for Paul, was convinced that they were going to die in that ship. But Paul never doubted what God had once revealed to him years before, that Paul would one day stand before the Roman emperor and witness Christ before the most powerful man in the world at that time. God allowed Paul to see an angel in the midst of that storm and to hear the reminder from that angel of what God had promised him. God may not allow any of us to ever see his angels, but he doesn't have to. He's already promised us that he uses them to protect us. What God does do is to tell us to trust what his word promises. One day, each believer will leave this world of trouble permanently. Believers in, in Jesus do not fear the greatest of all troubles, death. Because we know God's promise. Christ has forgiven our sin. So that on the day we die, his angels will gently carry us to Jesus' side in heaven, just as God has promised. We read from the book of Acts, chapter 27, reading there verses 20 to 25. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, 
You should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. This is the word of our God. We pray. Almighty God, you richly and unceasingly furnish us with all good things, and you preserve us day by day. Make us to acknowledge this with our whole heart, that we may thank and praise you for your loving kindness and mercy here and forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord our God bless and keep you in his loving care.